last time when we were talking about scatter plots, we were trying to measure the strength, right? And all we could come up with strong, moderate, or weak. In this section, we're going to be measuring the strength of a linear relationship using something called a correlation coefficient. So be careful when we're defining this, the correlation coefficient is a number that measures the linear relationship between two numerical values. This is only going to make sense to us if the trend is linear and both variables are numerical. If someday you decide to take um, a higher level statistics course, you'll get a coefficient that measures different relationships like parabolic, exponential, logarithmic, things like that. In this class, this is specifically for linear relationships. So if you have something that has a changing trend, probably not a good idea to use a correlation coefficient to measure the strength. Here are some facts about the correlation coefficient. It is going to be represented by the letter R, lowercase. Now the correlation coefficient is going to take on values between negative 1 and 1. If the value is really close to either negative 1 or positive 1, this means that the association is strong. That means that there's going to be a 1 to 1 relationship. That means you're not going to have a whole lot of variation. That means that you're not going to have a whole lot of y's associated with just one x. Now on the flip side, the closer our correlation coefficient is to zero, the weaker that association is going to be. Now here are some visual examples of r. So if I measure your height in inches, and then I measure your height in centimeters, and I try to see the linear relationship between those two, well, just because I changed the measurement doesn't mean I changed your height. So those have a perfect one-to-one -one correlation, and it's also a positive correlation. So as your height increases in inches, so does your height in centimeters. So we're going to have a positive correlation coefficient. That means R is going to equal 1. Now, if I look at the life expectancy of partners in a male and female relationship, that is going to be a really strong relationship. And as one life expectancy increases, so the other one, but not always perfectly. So that's going to have a correlation coefficient of 0.98. Now, as we look at these other ones, we can see that as we get a weaker relationship, so more spread and looking more like a shotgun blast instead of a nice paint spray, okay, we're going to see that R is going to be like 0.72. So as your height increases, your weight will increase, but not in perfect harmony, right? It's going to explain some of it, but not all of it. All right, when we have something like a shotgun blast, like um, your age versus how long you spend in traffic, that's going to have a correlation coefficient of zero because they're not related at all. Now, as we move in another direction, if we have a negative correlation, our R value is going to start to be negative. So, for example, if we look at the total births of women and we look at the literacy rate in a certain country, if the literacy rate has increased, that means that women are going to have less babies. So that is going to have a negative R value of negative 0.79. If we look at the year somebody started at a company versus their salary, well, the later they started, the less time that they've been at the company, right? So sen people of seniority tend to earn more. So as the year increases when you started, your salary is going to decrease. That's going to have an R of negative 0.9. All right, let's look at an example. So let's say that the following scatter plot relates the size of a diamond to retail. What can we say about the correlation between carat size and price? Estimate the value of R. So if you're not familiar with diamonds, um, the size isn't the only thing that matters. It has the carat size, which is the size of the diamond, but you also have clarity, color, and cut. So even though it seems like there's a strong positive correlation between the size of the diamond, there's also going to be other factors, so I wouldn't say that R equals exactly 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these scatter plots above, and I'm going to try to kind of guesstimate which one it looks most like. Well, it looks like it has almost a 0.98 scatter if I compare it to B. So I'm going to go ahead and say that R is somewhere between 0.95-ish. 
and one, but I definitely know it's less than one. And it also has a positive correlation, so that's why I said positive 0.95 and one. Now, here's the reason why it's so important to look at a scatter plot and try to guesstimate R. Let's say that somebody threw a small carrot, or not a small carrot, let's say that somebody threw a small diamond into the sample, but for some reason that diamond had amazing color, amazing clarity, amazing cut, right? And so let's say that even though it was a small diamond, it actually had a really high price. What that can do is that that can skew our R value. So instead of having something like this, it adds so much variation that it's gonna kind of skew the relationship. And we're like, hey, wait a minute, our, our R value should be higher. Is there some sort of outlier affecting R? So it's good to take a look at the graph and at the output value, just so you have an idea if there's anything messing with your data.